Let's learn about serverless application model in AWS. To go through this, if you want to follow along, open up a Cloud9 IDE within your AWS console. So search for AWS Cloud9, and then while you're logged in, click Create Environment, and I will call this SAM Demo, and accept all of the defaults, and then I will click Create. Now this will take probably 30 or sec 30 seconds or so to create, so let me just talk about SAM then. Um, when you're creating applications within a cloud environment like AWS, um, sometimes the resources you make are going to be managed by you, and then sometimes you want to um, create resources that are going to be managed by the cloud provider. Um, and, and people who do serverless applications are looking to offload as much of the infrastructure management as possible over to AWS. And in particular, they don't want to deal with things like VPCs and things of that nature. So um, if you're going to be building a serverless application, then you're probably using Lambda and also maybe using API Gateway. And on the back end, you might be using something like DynamoDB. Now, if you're going to build an application this way, uh, the, the smart way to do things is to use infrastructure as code. And CloudFormation is the template language uh, that you use within AWS for building your infrastructure. Unfortunately, it can be pretty wordy to use infrastructure as code using CloudFormation. And so th if you're doing something like serverless, they've created the serverless application model to have a template language that is much smaller uh, for creating your infrastructure. And it so happens that SAM um, allows you to do infrastructure as code as well as scaffold many of your most common applications. Okay, so with that explanation, let's go ahead and click open. And I'm going to close this welcome window. Over here on the left-hand side in environment is where my resources are going to be showing up as I create files. I'm going to create, take this terminal window right here and move it up into the main area. I'm going to close this so I have lots of real estate to work with. And you could install SAM CLI, the command line interface, on any local computer like your Mac or your PC. Um, but to get the permissions right and all the settings right, especially as you're learning, uh, one of the easiest ways to get started with it is just to open up a Cloud9 IDE. And so if I do SAM hyphen hyphen version, I can see that it's already installed, so I'm ready to get moving. Okay, um, the first thing I wanna do is type SAM init. And this is gonna start setting up a project for me locally. And a SAM project is gonna have not only my infrastructure as code template file information, but also um, the code for a common application. And we're gonna get to pick uh, one of our common applications here. So I'm gonna say I wanna use a quick start template, and I wanna do a hello world example. And although it doesn't state it, uh, a hello world example includes code for a Lambda function that's connected to an API. Do I want to use Python? I'm going to say no, and instead I'm going to select Node. And uh, the next question just asks, uh, whenever we're doing deployments, do we want to, um, how do we want to send our code over to AWS? And I'm going to say create a zip file out of my local project code and then upload it. And I want to use the hello world example here. No on the x-ray tracing. Okay, so now I'm going to finally set up some settings more specific to my uh, project. I'm just going to go with the default, SAM application, and it says it's cloning some information, and there we go. I now have a folder over here on the left side that has my application in it. Um, so let's go ahead and expand that. And again, this was cloned from um, this URL right here. Um, Actually, this URL right up there. Um, okay, a couple interesting things here. One, the important part is this template.yaml. So this is our replacement for cloud formation. So this could be 10 or 20 times shorter than a comparable um, infrastructure as code file in cloud formation. 
The important part in this one is this section that says resources, and it says you're going to have a Lambda function, um, and this is really just the name of it, but this specifically is the resource name for a Lambda function. Here's properties of that Lambda function, such as the language it's going to be using. Um, this particular part, the code URI, says where is the code that's going to be running in this function, and that's in another folder. So uh, just to highlight something here, um, we have two things happening as part of SAM. One is we have infrastructure as code that could be creating in this file many, many Lambda function resources, a Dynamo database, DB database table, um, APIs, all kinds of things. That's infrastructure, uh, and that's really the key thing that SAM is about. Um, now, in addition to that, as part of your project, you'll have folders that contain your code samples. And then the combination of your infrastructure as code and your code sample, co well, your code, your application, are things that collectively you would put into a um, code repository so that you can iterate on your project. Okay, um, down below, it it says some things that it, that it's going to implicitly, as part of this template, create an API and an IAM role. Um, it explicitly says we're going to create a function, but implicitly you can't really use your function without an IAM role. And down here it says it's going to be getting its events from an API, and so implicitly it knows that it needs uh, an API, and so there's some additional information about that down here. Um, that might seem a little complicated at first, but there's plenty of documentation out there, and at the end of the day they are trying to simplify things. Um, and it is maybe a little simpler if you're starting with this template. Okay, let's go ahead and look at our code real quick. So I come over to the Hello World folder, and under there, there is app.js. And um, this is a typical Lambda file, that uh, Lambda function file. And if we pass this thing back to a, an API gateway, then this part right here is what will ultimately get returned to whatever is calling the API. In our case, that would be a web browser. Okay, so here's our, our code. Um, of course, you can write code and modify your Lambda function any, any way you want. Let's come back to here, and let me change directories into my uh, uh, SAM app. There I am. Okay, so now that I'm in this folder, Let's type SAM build. And what this is doing in this step is um, it is looking at, at all of my resources and then it's creating a staging file. And if you don't see the staging file, then in this little icon here, you can do show hidden files or hide your hidden files. And so this uh, dot prefixed folder contains staging information that is ready to be pushed to AWS. Okay, the first time that we do this, uh, when we push to AWS, we will type after doing SAM build, we'll do SAM deploy guided. All right, so really right now we're thinking in terms of a cloud formation stack right now. And so it's asking for some things, uh, some additional information from us. We'll take the defaults. Um, and this last one here where it says, hello world function may not have authorization defined. Is that okay? That one we won't take the default. We'll say yes. Okay. And um, this may take a little while. Um, but what it's doing is it's going to be looking at your uh, SAM template right here, and it is going to create a cloud formation template out of that, which is you know potentially 20 times longer with all of the correct syntax. And then it will uh, create a stack, which is cloud formation terminology for all of the resources associated with your application. And so after several minutes, uh, creating things like any necessary S3 buckets or uh, other things to hold our resources, um, this thing will be up and running. Looks like we're getting a little bit of progress here, so this is good. I'll 
I'll just sit here silently while it, it does its work. When it gets to the end, there's going to be a um, URL associated with the API that's created, and that API is connected with our Lambda function. So um, once it gets through with all of these resource creations here, it is going to give us uh, another section which tells me about my outputs, and I'm looking for that URL once that output section appears. Okay, so here's our outputs section, and I look down here for Hello World API, and I can actually click on it and select Open. There I am, Hello World. Okay, so it works, and it wasn't too hard to create this full stack, if you will. Um, we basically typed SAM in it. We did um, SAM build and SAM deploy guided, and basically it's there. Uh, and at this point, if we needed, if we wanted to, we could keep on updating our application um, in various places, and then just go back to the terminal and do SAM uh, build and SAM deploy again, and it will go out there. Now, because of the nature of uh, of this, this is meant to be deployed as a single set of resources, um, but. In the bigger scheme of things, you don't necessarily want just one set of resources. You're going to have maybe a development environment and a staging environment and a production environment. And, and using a tool like this allows you to, um, through these commands and using SAM, to deploy to multiple places. Okay, with that, we want to break things down. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and start deleting things. Now this is where this video might get a little bit um, harder. Uh, we want to get rid of everything. So I am going to go over to cloud formation. So let me open up another window here and pull it over. So here's where we have some resources. Um, based on the timestamp, we have created three different stacks of resources in AWS that we want to get rid of. So let's go ahead and we can type them in here at the command line. And I'm going to say SAM delete stack name SAM app. Yes. Yes. And so right now, there are live resources that are out there running somewhere. And this command will pull all that back down for us. Once that is complete, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my other window. And I want to, look, I see it completed in the background. Um, I want to get rid of this other one. And, and so in theory, I could do it from the command line, but I think that there's a little issue. And so it might be easier to do it here. So I'm going to get rid of this delete, delete stack, and delete is in progress. And so that will finish up. I think it has a little bit of an issue with a, a bucket associated, there we go, with a bucket associated with it. So now, if I do that, and then it will correctly delete um, that's why I went over to the interface, um, because if I do it from there, it fails, but it doesn't tell me why. But if I do it here twice and delete, then <laughs> the second time it allows me to delete the bucket and then everything's good. Okay, so the last thing I need to do is just delete my um, Cloud9 environment. So I will come over here to Cloud9, click here, delete. And a delete is in progress. And that is the end of this demonstration of serverless application model.